Welcome to the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast, where we talk about life, leadership, and the gospel. All right. Hey, welcome to the TJ Mall Leadership Podcast. This is episode three. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. It means a lot to me that you would give me a few minutes of your day uh, to let me speak into your life. Um, if it's meaningful to you and you glean something uh, educational from this or encouraging, I would love for you to like or subscribe, share it with somebody, get on the socials and let them know. Today, I want to talk about the in-between just for a few minutes. Um, there is an in-between in our lives and kind of the middle ground. I call it the waiting. And I feel like every, every person I talk to at some point, it doesn't matter if it's their spiritual journey, their professional journey, in their parenting, it doesn't matter. There always seems to be this tension in the in-between. Like everybody's looking for a destination. You know, people are like, man, I can't wait till my kids are potty trained, right? And then when they get potty trained, it's like, man, I can't wait for my my kids to be able to like fend for themselves a little bit. And then later on, you know, there's always kind of this in between. People started out at work and they say, man, I can't wait till I get this promotion. And then they get the promotion and they say, well, I can't wait till I get this promotion. It Every avenue, every age demographic, it's that's a reality. Even in, right, like I can't wait to get done with high school and graduate. And then it's, I can't wait till I get done with college and start my career. There's always an in-between in our lives. And I would call it the unenjoyable necessary, like the waiting, the in-between. And these two, for the sake of this podcast, when I say the waiting or the in-between, these two phrases are interchangeable for me because all of our lives, we are waiting. We are in between point A and point B. And so today what I want to do, if I can, for just a few minutes is share what I've come to realize in my own life and in the lives of a lot of other leaders around me is that there are six undeniables in the waiting. There are six things that over and over again, I have seen to be true in the waiting. And the first one today is that you will absolutely wrestle in the waiting. Um, There is no coasting if you want to do great things, right? Like, no one's kid potty trains themselves. No one, uh, no one gets A's and A pluses. I don't know what those are like, but uh, I guess for people that get A pluses and, and and really good grades, like those don't happen by accident. There is a wrestle in the in between, and there's a struggle, right? Like to get from point A to point B, we have to realize and know that there's going to be conflict. There's going to be tension, and not all conflict, not all tension is necessarily negative, but it is absolutely necessary. In the struggling is is it kind of in that in-between when we do wrestle and when we do struggle, sometimes it is with our confidence, sometimes it's with other people, sometimes it's with our purpose, and sometimes it's purposeful struggle, right? And, and so what we have to make sure that we're doing in the in-between in those moments of wrestling is that we continue to struggle, like we continue to wrestle against uh, the, the vision, the future, the hope, the destination, wherever we're going, we don't want to capitulate to fear. We don't want to give in and surrender because it, in surrender is the failure, right? Like if we give up on that dream, if we give up on that vision, if we give up on that hope, that's that's a moment of failure. But if we continue to struggle, sometimes we get caught up in this idea that if we're struggling or if we're not to the end of the journey instantaneously, then we failed. No, absolutely not. Hear me today. If you are struggling, if you are still in the fight, then that means you're growing. Like like struggle, but don't surrender because the struggle makes you stronger. I um, I own a CrossFit gym here in town with one of my good friends and and we get to coach people and, and see people struggle uh, with weight training and weightlifting. And I've noticed people come into the gym, and and a guy actually said it today at, at lunch class, actually. He said um, he ran a mile. It was yesterday, actually. He ran a mile, and he said, man, that's the first time. I can't remember the last time in my life that I was able to run an entire mile without stopping. Now, to some people, that, that was like, oh, my God, man, I can run 10 miles without stopping or 12 miles. But for him, this was a genuine win 
to where he didn't he didn't give up in the middle of the mile. He continued to struggle. Now it wasn't easy, but the struggle led to growth. Every day when he comes and runs, every week when he comes and runs, it's not easy to do that. It's a struggle and it's uncomfortable. You know, it's the same thing with the guy lifting the weights or the person working on their, you know, second level calculus or their their biology, right, or nursing degree or whatever it is. Those things aren't easy in the moment, but they lead to great results if you will continue to struggle and refuse to surrender. Don't capitulate to fear or self-consciousness, right, or, or being self-conscious, if you will, like, like thinking maybe even less of yourself or struggling with your identity or your purpose in those moments. Like know this, that if you have a vision, a future, and a plan for your life, it's okay if today you're struggling because that struggle, as long as you don't surrender, will make you stronger, So I'm going to say that, and then I'll be done with the first undeniable, right? Struggle, don't surrender, because the struggle makes you stronger. Uh, The the second thing is that there's a reason. I think sometimes we forget that the in-between is purposeful. I I follow Jesus, and and I'm a Christian, and so I I believe that, that God purposely authors the waiting in our lives to make us who we're supposed to be before we get to where we're supposed to go. Okay, I'm going to say that again. I believe the in-between, the waiting in our lives is this season, oftentimes it can be this season of cultivation to make us or create in us the person that we're supposed to be before we get to where we're supposed to go. It happens all the time that we get so obsessed with the destination that we miss out on all the beauty and all of the lessons and all of the growth and all of the relationships that God has for us right now. In the middle of the waiting, in the middle of the struggle, in the in-between, sometimes we get so fixated on the end goal or the purpose that we forget that there's a reason that God has me right where I am right now for a specific season, purpose, and reason. It makes us, I'll say it this way, the reason for the waiting sometimes is to make us, whether it be compassionate or stronger or more empathetic, it it, it makes us into who we're supposed to be. But I would even argue this is something to think about in in these six undeniables. Point number two, it's a season where we're also unmade in the waiting, a a lot of the times in the waiting things are taken from our lives, right? Like some of the unhealthy habits that we have in the waiting, in the in-between, we learn to be disciplined rather than undisciplined, right? We we learn to be faithful rather than unfaithful. In the in-between, we are made into who God wants us to be, but there's also a lot of things about us that prayerfully and thankfully get unmade in those seasons of waiting. I think often about when I think about the reason for the waiting, I think about Joseph in the Bible and if you look at Joseph's life, there's this, man, it's it's kind of like this up and down journey of he's this kid that he gets this dream from God and he's given a coat of many colors and he's, a, you know, he's a prized son of his father and man, like his dad loves him and he just thinks, man, life is going to be incredible. God's given me this really cool dream and his brothers hated him for it. So that his brothers were like, well, let's kill this dude. So instead of killing him, they throw him into a pit, they sell him into slavery He's in slavery, he works his way up, you know, to a place of notoriety in slavery, right? And then he's wrongfully accused of something, and he's thrown into prison, and even in prison, he works his way back up. It's this seesaw in his life, this season of being taken from really high highs to really low lows through this, through these years of brokenness. Well, at the end of his life, after all of these years, he finds himself second in command to Pharaoh, and having the ability in that moment to give food back to his people right, to, to preserve his heritage and his lineage. He went through all of these things, all of these seasons of being made into something and even things from his life being unmade so that he would be in a position of influence one day to serve and care for and love even the people in his life that wanted to harm him. So there was a reason, even though he didn't like the in-between, the wrestle was uncomfortable, there was a reason for it, and it put him in a position to be able to bless other people. Uh, I'll say this because this is one of my, I think, one of my favorite in-between stories. Uh, our church here at First Baptist, there was a summer where um, our youth pastor who had been here for a long time was no longer here, and um, 
we were kind of moving to through some you know interviews and and other youth pastors were interviewing for the job and and it was looking like it was going to be you know several months and so I had this idea I was I was leading worship and preaching but I told this to our uh, personnel committee and some of our other guys I said listen y'all I'll just I'll just do the interim youth stuff through the summer too and uh that way it's kind of a placeholder and, you know, the kids know who I am and, and, you know, we can, we're not bringing in somebody else and then somebody else leaving, you know, I'm part of the furniture here. They'll just know me. And then the new guy can come in and it'll be fine. Well, in that summer, in that in between, I think one of the reasons why God allowed that to happen in my life and for our church is that I gained such an appreciation for youth pastors and like such a compassion and empathy for them because in my mind, I was like, I'm not called to this. It was difficult hard work, like developing and pouring into and discipling kids. And then, you know, it was just like, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, kids are just really, really, really tough. And so one, say thank you to a youth pastor if you know him, but, but man, it, it cultivated something in my heart, this deeper level of appreciation for people that serve teenagers and middle schoolers and kids. And so like, even in that for me and for our church, there was this reason in the in-between and it unmade some of the even perceptions and thoughts I had about youth ministry and student ministry. Um, number three, if you're still tracking with me, is that um, the waiting, this in-between, is also a proving ground. Um, it's kind of the place where you decide how much you believe in where you're headed and how bad you want it, right? Right. Uh, we could go back to the guy that was running the mile. Like his goal, he wanted to run that mile without stopping. In the middle of the mile, whether he was a quarter mile or half mile in, he had to decide at some point he had to make a decision. How bad did he really want to achieve that goal? The the in-between is where a lot of failure, a lot of struggle, and a lot of even unknown reasons are going on all at the same time. So you have to make up your mind, okay, this is the proving ground. Right. I mean, th- this is the place where I have to. Be- do I believe in where I'm going? Do believe I believe in where I want to go? And if so, then I've got to continue to just grind it out. I've got to continue to give it my all. I can't coast to victory. I've got to keep struggling. And I, I can't help but think of uh, Humphrey Davy. Right. Everybody gives Thomas Edison the uh, the credit for the light bulb, which is, in my opinion, kind of ratchet. Because if you go back, just Google if you want to the Davy lamp. Um, Humphrey Davy kind of paved the way for Thomas Edison to do his thing. Um, but at one point, there's this record of w- when they're they're going through all these different filaments for the light bulb. You know, the, at one point, they used platinum, you know, and there's all these different things. And at one point, they had tracked that there were 2,774, when they started recording, that there were 2,774 attempts at a sustainable light bulb before they could nod their heads together and say, yeah, I think we've gotten there or we're at least close. So I, I thought about that as I, was, as I was prepping this and thinking about sharing this with you guys. I thought, what happens if they if they get to 2,500 and they're like, you know what, 2,500 is enough. Like, we are done. You know what I'm saying? But what? And, and so then you say, okay, well, what if they made it to 2,773? It was the 2,774th time that Thomas Edison and his gang were like, you know what, I think we've got to a, a place for the light bulb to be sustainable, a place where we can mass produce this. This could be advantageous to, to civilization. We've made it. Man, what if you gave up at 2,773? My fear is that in life, in the in-between, there's a lot of times in our lives that we give up at 2,773 without making that one more attempt without really believing in the destination where we're headed, without really giving our all. We let, I said earlier, whether it's being self-conscious or we like negativity, right? Negative self-talk, things we've been through in our lives, things we've heard from other people. We like, we let those things sometimes so negatively affect us in the in-between that sometimes on the cusp of greatness, on the cusp of being the leader that we really want to be, 2,773rd attempt, we say we've had it. My encouragement today was it would be to just keep going. Like, know that it's going to be a furnace. And that's, I guess, when, when we think about it in the way of it being a proving ground, and the in-between is the place where, where the gold and right, the, the fire kind of gets turned up and the gold is purified. And if you want your leadership, your parenting to be purified, I mean, you're, you're going to go through the fire. You're going to go through difficulty. You're, you're going to have to believe. You're going to have to continue to educate yourself and grow. Like this is 
the proving ground, the in-between, before you get to the trophy, before you get to the promotion, being who God's called you to be in the in-between is the proving ground. So you have to ask yourself, how much do I believe this is where I'm really called to go and really want to go? And two, how bad do I want this? If you want it, and if it's a vision for your life, it's a direction, if it's a goal that you want to achieve, do not give up at 2,770, on the 2,773rd attempt, right? Keep going. Number four, in, uh, under the six undeniables in the waiting is that this is where your character will be tested. Um, there, there is no doubt that in the in-between, on your way to your destination, that there will be opportunity to compromise your character and take shortcuts. Um, if it's a degree, there will be opportunity to cheat on a test or have someone else write that paper, right? <laughs> like there, there is no doubt, like, like on the way to financial freedom, there may be opportunities to take shortcuts, right? Whether it's cheat on your taxes or lie about an asset or whatever it is, I'm, there will always be opportunity in the in-between to compromise your character. It's where your character will be tested. So you have to lean in to who God's called you to be and who you really want to be. Like I said earlier, it, it's this place where you're made and also unmade. So you have to decide every single day along the journey who you're going to be because there is going to be temptation that wants to pull you away from your true identity. Like if you're a Christian, it's going to, it, it wants to tear down who you are in Christ, right? Like every single day you wake up, like there is going to be a temptation to be who you're not supposed to be. Like there's going to be a temptation to be something other than you really want to be every day. Like I would be lying to you if, if I said, man, this is just going to be an easy road and everything's going to go awesome and you're going to get, you're going to hit all your goals and metrics and you're going to get to your dreams unscathed. That is not true. There's always going to be temptation to compromise your character. This will be in the in-between where your character is tested. Number five would be that, um, that the waiting is, is, it's not a settlement. It's just a season. I think sometimes people get discouraged I know I've gotten discouraged in the waiting or the in-between because I've been convinced that the waiting is a settlement, that I've got to build my house in the waiting, that, I, that I've got to set up shop in the waiting, when the reality is that the waiting is just a season. It's a season for me to be made by God. It's a season for me to be, for my character to be tested and refined. It's a season for me to wrestle and grow stronger. It's a season for me to understand the reasons of God. It's just a season. And I think we get trapped sometimes in the mindset that whatever position or place we're in today is the way it's going to have to be forever. And that's just not true. Now, I say it all the time to our team and to other people. But I, I try to encourage them, especially people, uh, men and women, uh, young people that are struggling with discouragement. I, I say, think about the winter, right? Like if you were to look outside in the winter, like there is no greenery, you know, there, all the flowers are dead. Everything's drab. It's gray. It's kind of miserable. If you live in Alaska, there's genuine conditions because it's so dark and dreary for so long, but it's just a season, and if you're faithful in the in-between, if you hang on to your calling and your purpose and your identity and who you know you are and where you want to go, that season changes eventually. The sun comes back up. Things begin to bloom again. The gray turns to green and you get to see life again as long as you don't settle in the in-between, as long as you don't set up shop in the despair or set up shop in the failed character moments, right? Or whatever that in-between is for you, knowing that it's just, it's just a momentary season between where you are now and where God's called you to be. The last thing, and, and this is probably one of, uh, it's probably the most important out of all of them, is that there will always be an in-between. In our lives, like right now, I am, I am in between where I am today and the, like the ultimate goal for me is seeing Jesus face to face. I'm always gonna be in that in-between until I see him. Like in my job here at the church, I'm in between this week, this month, today, and what five years from now looks like. Where you're at right now, you're in the in-between of something. If you're parenting, if you're on a team, if you're working towards a goal, a degree, a promotion, whatever it is, you are in the in-between. My challenge for you, my hope for you, is that you don't miss out on what God has for you in the in-between. 
I, I don't want you to set up shop here and live here forever in the in-between. But I pray that you would get everything you could out of the wrestle right now, the struggle, the growth. I, I hope you can understand or, or find some reasons, like like uh, see the reason of God in the middle of the waiting. I hope that that you will be able to define for yourself, to clarify some vision. Where do I want to go? What am I going to do? How bad do I want it? Right? Like, allow God to refine your character. Don't waste. I guess I could say it like this. Don't waste the in-between. It's really, really easy sometimes to waste the in-between because we're so fixated on the destination. But my encouragement to you today would be that you get everything out of the in-between that you're supposed to. That you would allow God to use it in your life while you wait, wrestle, struggle, are made and unmade in the in-between on your way to where you want to go. Pray you don't get so fixated on the destination that you miss out on what God has for you today. So you will wrestle. Go ahead and just let that be known in yourself and in your heart. You're going to wrestle. There is a reason for this in-between and for this waiting This is the proving ground. This is where you will be made into who God's called you to be before you get to where God wants you to go. This is where your character will be tested. There's going to be opportunities uh, to to triumph in character or to fail. Um, This is a season, and it's not a settlement. Like, you don't have to set up shop here forever. These seasons will change. And know this, when this season is over, there'll be another one and another one and another one. You're always in the in-between. So let God do let God do what he wants to do in your heart while you're in the waiting and in the in between and watch God move. Thanks for hanging out with me. Again, listen, like, subscribe. If you glean something from this that is beneficial to you, share it with someone. You're free to use any of this content and uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast where we talk about life, leadership and the gospel. If you enjoyed this episode, share with a friend. For more content, follow us on Instagram and YouTube. If you have any questions you would like to ask TJ, whether it is about life, leadership, or the gospel, you can email those to TJ Malden Leadership Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you again for listening, and we hope you join us again on the TJ Malden Leadership Podcast.